give y'all a minute to get in here. Make sure y'all say where y'all from now. Good morning, Candice. Morning, Karen. Jamisha, what's up, girl? I'm gonna get this thing started in a minute. Mm. Y'all see, I got my water today. I'm gonna get real good. Harvest Alabama, always coming through. KJ, country boy. What's up, Derek? Good morning. My niece in the building. What's up, Camille? Minnie Me. What's up, Tinker? Tinker, I actually think I saw you um state line uh getting lottery tickets. Good morning, Flower Bloom. Morning, good morning. Thank you. Thank you. I love my new house too. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay, I see you, son. Son, you Texas. I'm gonna give a couple people about another 30 seconds to get in here. We're gonna get started. Ain't no roll tide now, Derek Wilder. No, nah, War Eagle. Uh, hey, I'm sorry. War Eagle. No roll tide over here. Nah, I can't even. Nah, War Eagle, baby. Eagle's in the building. Good morning, Tammy. Where y'all from now? Where y'all from? Y'all know I love to do that now. I want to see see my cities, where, where my city's at. Yeah, Tinker, it was. It was about, I want to say about a month or so ago. You was with maybe your dad. Good morning, Hazel. All right, Missouri in the building. What's up, Jonathan? Now, y'all. Tell me, I don't want no bad blood. There ain't going to be no road tide now. Maryland. What part of Maryland? Warrior, that's right, Shannon. McDonald and Candace, I just, I just used to live out there. I just moved from out there in um, Hampton. Pratt, oh, Peoria, be in New Orleans. Okay, okay. Louisiana, Darnell, Dun, Dunnell, Orlando in the building. Oh man, we got the UK in the building. What? All right, Gail. All right, y'all, we're going to get this thing started. Hollywood in the house. Well, um, what drove me to do um, Motivational Monday was I've, I've had a few people reach out to me and ask me, hey, how, how do you stay so strong? Uh, how do you stay positive? Um, and just a little bit about myself. Um, I've got two of the strongest parents. Um, man, I, I mean, just growing up, that's all I ever saw from them is just strength, encouragement. So that was instilled in me. So, you know, I, I pretty much kind of got it honest, um, so to speak. But um, growing up, I just, it was just always positivity, you know, from, from my parents. Um, so that's that's my foundation. You know, I, I got it from them. Um, but I do also understand that everybody have not been that fortunate. You know, everybody... Um, you know, wasn't raised in a two parent home or, you know, had encouraging, motivating, positive parents. You know, I've seen a few, um, posts. I've seen this post that somebody said, did your mama call you bees? And, you know, but I, and I'm like, man, I'm blown away at the responses uh, from people on my timeline that, you know, that was like a norm you know, for their mother to call them out their name and stuff like that. But I never experienced anything like that. So I do understand that everybody do not have that, that background, but that's okay. You know, I mean, we can, we can, we can go through life and say, you know what? I wasn't raised this way. I wasn't fortunate enough, but you can keep making those excuses or you can kind of break that curse because we can't do anything. We can't control what the way we was raised what neighborhood we was raised in. We can't, those are things outside our control. But once you get grown and you know better, you got to do better. I mean, you know, it's really, it's really no excuse. Um, um, 
at that point. And you're right, Camille, it is sickening, you know, it's sad, you know, that, man, I mean, it's, it, it is heartbreaking for me to um, imagine, I can't even imagine, my mom and dad never cussed us. They never even said a cuss word at us. Or even in cunt, I don't, I mean, we, we did things, you know, we, we, we did things, we were kids, you know, and uh, we wasn't perfect, but I mean, man, it, it, um, I, I, I just, that's, that's heartbreaking. So that's a little bit about like where I come from, um, and my little foundation or whatever the case may be, but me being strong, that's just, it's just embedded in me. Uh, it's a choice of mine. You know, to be honest with you, it's a choice of mine. I keep a positive mindset. That doesn't mean that I don't go through things. That doesn't mean that I have not been through things in my life. I've been through some some serious things in my life, but I allow those um, obstacles and situations in my life to allow me to grow. I didn't allow those bad things to change who I was. Um, so, you know, I, I, another thing I went through a traumatic experience about four years ago. And it took me three years to get out of that experience. And I'm 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 coming with I'm coming with that, y'all. I feel it real soon. Real, real soon. My real testimony. I'm coming with that real soon. But going through that life changing event for me, it it changed me. And the way I think, you know, um, man, it, when, 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 when you at the bottom and life has just got you down, depressed, sad, nothing can make you better, feel better because what you're going through is just that heartbreaking. It hurts that bad. You learn, I conditioned myself during that time. I taught myself this. I said, I'm so down and I was so sad that I could not let anything in my control make me sad. Now, this situation was out of my control. I couldn't do anything about it. Nothing that I could do. Nothing. But I learned that people that was coming into my life, people that I was dealing with, things of that nature, if I can control that, I controlled it. Meaning, I give you an example. You call my phone on some drama, negative stuff. You know what I did? Block. I blocked more people at that time and in that point in my life than ever before because I could control it. I could control who I was talking to, who I was texting, who I was dealing with. So I, I simply changed my mindset, and it's still my mindset now. I even if I'm around somebody that's negative. It's like the energy, it just hits me and I don't like it. So I'll remove myself completely from that situation. You know what I mean? I, I've learned that sometimes friends, family as well, you really have to love people from a distance. Sometimes it may be your mama, maybe your daddy, it may be your sister, brother. Some people you have to learn how to love from a distance because at the end of the day, if you're not, if you're not taking care of yourself, Let's say your mother, let's say your father, okay? If you're not taking care, how can you take care of your kids? How can you be a good wife, a good husband, if you're not taking care of yourself? So self is important. And, and I learned that during that time in my life, I learned that I have to take care of myself. I'm going through something that's so hard, but I'm going to get through it. But I got to take care of myself and I can't let other people cast their energy on me, you know. And that's something that I taught myself and and I continue to do that now. Another little thing that I do that helps me mentally, um, I learned that what you listen to um, determines your mood. So if you are already in a little bad mood and you put on that. That, that that gangster rap. I ain't talking about just, you know, I mean some hardcore gang. You going you gonna get amped up and you gonna stay in that mood. So I learned that, you know, I start practicing just
putting my Pandora on in the mornings, mainly Monday through Friday, okay, in the mornings before I start my day. And I listen to my music because it gives me this, you know, it's like motivational. Um, it's my time that I spend with God and I just get in tune with him. And it's just my mind, my spirit, it just, it just calms me. And I'll do that throughout the day. If something happens and I feel myself, I, I, put, I put that music on and I bump it just like I'm pumping today's uh, greatest hits right now. You know what I mean? Because it just changes my whole persona. It, it really does. It works for me. You know, I, I found that that, that really do, um, it works for me. But, you know, just surrounding yourself by positive people. I know my circle has gotten very small. Um a lot of people not for you. Um, a lot of people smile in your face, laugh with you, drink with you, all of the above. They're really not for you. So, you know, years ago, I used to be too nice. I used to know and recognize that a person really wasn't for me. They was cutting my back out. I see them. I hear them cut my back out. But I was just such a good person, good-hearted person to why I, I, I would still deal with those people. But I have learned that you can't. You can't because you, you you get hurt in the end repeatedly, repeatedly. And you can't really be mad at nobody but yourself because they've already showed you their true colors. You know, so you keep allowing them to come around. You keep hanging out with them. You keep dealing with them. And then you, you calling somebody else on the phone. Man, I can't believe they did. Yeah, you can. Really. I mean, because they've done it before. You know, so um, just... That positive mindset, y'all, I my I can't even tell y'all how I thought of my quote, but it just I thought of it like maybe three days after my traffic stop. And if you really break it down, you know, what you think, you know what I mean? The way that you think about things, you know, change we can't change what's going on in this world right now if it doesn't start with the individual. Think about it, right? It starts with the individual, whether it's a congressman, whether it's a senator, whether it's somebody in the White House. It doesn't matter. It starts with that individual per person saying that, you know what? OK, we need to make some changes and maybe I've been this way and been that way, but it ain't right. So I want to make it right. You know, it's, it starts within you. And once you once you make that decision, you change your mind, change your heart. You know what I'm saying? You got a good heart. You're not going to treat people that you, you, it just, it don't go, you can't do, you can't have both. You can't have a good heart and you cannot treat people bad. It does not go hand in hand. It doesn't even fit. It doesn't connect. Um, but you know, I, I'm going to continue to do what I'm doing. Um, nothing's going to stop me. Um, as long as y'all want it, I'm going to give it, you know, I'm just going to be honest. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of funny because I said, if I didn't go into law enforcement, because I love to help people, I was like, well, I really wouldn't be a therapist, but I would want to still help people. And it's kind of crazy because I'm somewhat, <laughs> I'm doing it now a little bit, you know, because people reaching out to me and saying, man, you just inspired me, you this, that, and the other. But so it's, it's real satisfying, you know, because um, I have been so blessed to have a true friend, a true friend. So many people do not have true friends. You have friends, you may hang out, but I'm talking about a true friend. And I, I and I, me and my friend, let me show you how me and my, my best friend, Crystal, met. I was, um, she was a dispatcher. Um, and when I was a deputy, law, those of you know law enforcement and things of that nature, your lifeline is that dispatcher. Okay. That's your lifeline. They need to be on point because if they sleep in or whatever, and you get out on the traffic stop, and they don't get where you, that's life or death. So I can just remember every time that she dispatched, my channel. She was always polite, professional, um, just good. She was always on it. Never had an attitude, none of that. 
And one day, I, even when you call in for information, just always polite. And I called and I said, I just got to meet you, you know. And from that day to now, we have been friends. And, and y'all, I'm telling y'all, when I posted that video and it went viral, there was a lady. She told me two days later, you're going to need an assistant. And I just kind of laughed to myself. And I'm like, what is this lady talking about? And two days after that, I said, Crystal, <laughs> I said, you want to be my assistant? She said, of course. And y'all, she has, man, when I tell y'all, in every kind of way, if I say Crystal, remind me this, she's handling all the engagements, people requesting to speak with me, have me on podcasts, all. I mean, if I text and say, Crystal, please text me, look, remind me. She's on it, y'all. So that's just been such a blessing for me. Um, to just have a really good friend. So if you got a good friend, love them, tell them, you know, hey, I love you. Thank you for being a true friend because she, like at this point in my life, she's been my life coach, my spiritual advisor, my best friend, my, my assistant, all of the above. She has definitely been that for me. Um, but if y'all have questions, drop them down there. Glenn, I see so no visits. I did go, Glenn, I did go to Mobile. I went to Mobile. I came back on Sunday. But um, if y'all got questions, man, drop them down there. I, I tried to make me a little list because I, I, I can kind of get off subject sometimes. Um, Another thing I do, I motivate myself. You know, I encourage myself. You know what I mean? Like, my mission for myself is be the best that I can be. And everything, you know, that's what I strive to do. So I encourage myself, you know, a lot of times we sit around and we, we need somebody to tell us, um, you can do it. And that's good. Sometimes, hey, we do get to points in our life, we're going through something and you do need that person. But when I'm talking about the majority of the time, you need to be encouraging yourself. You need to be telling yourself, hey, I know I got this, you know, and I'm going I'm to I'm jump back. Um... When I went through that traumatic experience, um, even though it was, it was so hard, I told myself it could be just a little bit worse. And that's that positivity, y'all, that I try to bring out of any situation, no matter how dark it is. You know, I try to find just that little bit of positivity and just be like, hey, you know, I, I'm going to get through this. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm going to get through it. I'm going to make it. It's going to get better. And I'm telling y'all, when I when I share it, it's, it's going to blow you away. It's it's going it's going to blow you away because it's it's real deep. All right, I'm gonna take this some questions. How do you okay? How do you push through those that are negative? Danita, what I do is I don't even entertain it. Let me let me give you a prime example. When I went viral. Um, that same day, see, because I knew the Lord spoke to me. So I, I had already made up in my mind. I'm not entertaining anything negative, nothing, nobody, nothing. Don't entertain it. I had one or two people, um, they were messaging me and say, call me. I said, if it's in, I said, only positive vibes. So even if they were going to come some kind of way, nope, nope, no, 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 no. I didn't want to hear it. So even now, I do not entertain negative people, negative energy. At the first sign of, of somebody displaying that to me about what my mission is, I'm cutting you right off. I'm telling you now, I keep my scissors. Y'all may think it's mean. I keep my scissors with me. I will cut you off quicker than I'm telling quicker than you came up to me. I'm not dealing with that because, see, when you allow people to just be around you and fest around you in your in your area, that that's going to start messing with you a little bit. So for me, I don't, I do not entertain it at all. At all. Need to come. Thank you, Benjamin. I, let me tell you something, Benjamin. I have no idea where the Lord going to lead me with all this, but I'm going. If he say go, I am going. That's, that's a promise because I've never been to Oregon. Um, but if, if the Lord sent me that way, I'm going, I promise you. And if I come, wherever I come, I'm going to make it my business to drop my location on Facebook. So if I am in your city, just like, I'm really glad that I did do that. Um, Saturday, I was able to meet Mackenzie. 
Oh, man. Oh, man, the little girl. She is smart, y'all. She is smart. Uh, just, just a sweet little girl. Her mother, I applaud her mother for the way she's raising her because I can see it and I can tell that she's doing a great job with this little girl. And I and I just tried to give her some words. And we pink, we pink a promise, baby. I told her, I said, listen, we're going to pink and swear. I said, you promise me that you go in law enforcement, that you promise me you're going to always do the right thing. And we made a promise to that. And uh, just a sweet, just a sweet little girl. Um, let's see what else we got. I mean, Y'all don't be shy. Cut the foolishness. Denise, I, when I tell you, I... I cut I cut people off because I I am a caring person. That was kind of in a sense years ago a little weakness of mine because you can care too much, and in the process of caring and in the process of helping, people will bring you down if they change you. So you you have to you have to cut them off. It seems mean, but you have to. Um, Danita, you said, have I ever thought about speaking at college campuses? I will say this. Before all of this, back um, before I left Birmingham originally, back in 2014, I always wanted to go and speak at my high school, um, which is Huffman. I always, that was something that I always had a desire to do, go and speak to the 11th and 12th graders. And just to educate them on basically what I do and um, and and show them and tell them, hey, you know, you can do it. You can make this good money. You can just keep yourself clean, keep your, your credit clean, don't get in trouble, you know, and things of that nature. So if the opportunity presents itself, if somebody reaches out to me and say, hey, will you come speak at this college? I'm, hey, I'm on it. You know, I've had one or two people speak out from from um, different states about high schools. I'm just waiting. Once people get back with me, I'm going. I'm 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 definitely gonna do it. Um, all right. I see you, in Atlanta. Um, why is it that us black men get shot on sight when it's a white male traffic stop? From other videos that I've seen, they give all verbal warnings. But shoot them with a taser, but quick to pull the guns on American American Nate. Uh, I I'll get into that, um, Nate. Um, I have my uh, opinion um, on those situations. Okay, I've got three three opinions on why I feel like the shootings. A being fear. It's number one. I feel like there's a lot of officers that are scared. Okay. They got the gun. They got the badge. They are absolutely scared. Two, I believe that you have officers that just do not like black people, hate black people. Okay. Three, I also believe that a lack of understanding for our culture. Okay. So we as blacks, we know we we know that they are they are they are fads, you know, styles, whatever the case may be. We may see one black man with dreads dressed one way, and we may see another black male with dreads dressed another way, but we know the difference as blacks, which one that's gonna cut up and which one that's just his style for the day. Okay. So I think all three of those. Um, now, it's just my opinion, okay? Um, but, you you know, when I say that fear, that scaredness, that's that officer that was picked on and bullied in school, okay? And he grew up, and the best job he could get was a cop. And now he thinks he's Superman. And when you're scared, you pull that gun, you're going to do one or two things. You're going to shoot it, or you're going to put it back up. That's it. So... Training, when it comes to that, is going to be very important as well, okay? When I was on patrol, I had all that stuff on my gun belt. You understand what I'm saying? Trained in all of it. But when I had to put hands on, baby, you, you, a lot of times you don't, even, you don't have time to be getting anything. You just got to do what you got to do. But if you've never been in those situations before, 
And I'm going to tell you, this is a fact, okay? This is not my opinion right here when I say this. When I went through the Sheriff's Academy in 2005, there was four blacks. No, I'm sorry. Five blacks in my class. And day one, the instructor asked, how many of you all have ever been in a fight? And out of, I want to say 22, 23 people, guess who only raised their hand? The blacks in the class. Now, let's break that down. If, if I've never been slapped, if I've never been punched, if I've never felt like a, I've been in a position of disadvantage, I don't want to feel that. So I fear that. So I feel like that's a, that's a lot of the problem, too. That, like I'm telling you, scared. And I mean, it's not all of it, but that's a lot of the problem. I hope I answered your question, Nate. Let's see. Let's get down here to another one. Okay. Da, 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 da. Keep being a blessing and, and being positive. Words of encouragement. Keep letting him use you. I, I am, Shannon. I will not stop. I promise you. When you learn that negativity doesn't need a response or actions, uh, only we will experience. That's that's true. Don't entertain it. Okay. Will you ever promote uh, prison reform? My cousin been fighting for his freedom, 27, 18, 27 85 years sentence. Uh, let me tell you something. I personally, um, I know something about corrections because I started in, in corrections. But I'm about promoting anything positive, sweetheart. Um, if I come in contact with somebody that, hey, want my opinion, want this, or whatever the case may be, I'm all for it. Um, that's true. Lacey says, um, when caring for someone hurts you, you must pull away. You can't. And I think that was on my, my, my little list I wanted to hit. That sometimes, y'all, you stay in situations they have changed you. You've been with somebody three, five, six years. You ain't getting nothing out of it. They're destroying you. They're pulling you down. They're not encouraging you. They're not positive. Life too short, y'all. I have, there's another little personal motto I have. I'm going to treat people right and I'm going to live life to the fullest. I'm, it's too short. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not staying in those situations and neither should you. You're doing a great job. People's eyes will be open because of you receive the blessings that are yet to come. Thank you, Maurice. Thank you so much. Um, thank you from South Carolina. Uh, where y'all questions at? Let's see. My sister, let's come back. Okay. One second. I'm, I'm great, the elders. Thank you. Thaddeus. I'm sorry. Thaddeus. Um, but... I, don't, I I hope I didn't miss anybody question up in here. Um, and then I'm going to finish up. But, you know, y'all, all I can suggest and I can say to you all is just, you know, change your mind, man. Change, change your mind, your heart. Try to be a better person. You know what I mean? And being a better person doesn't mean that, you know, you don't have fun. Just treat people better, you know, um, treat, treat people better. And I've noticed, like I said the other day for myself, um, that I feel like my blessings come from the way that I treat people. So let me tell y'all, this is what I almost forgot. So you all know that, um, I closed on my home last Monday and I moved on Tuesday. Show you how the devil is. That's supposed to be a joyous day. It was a day from hell. Okay, listen to me very closely. I had about $1,200 worth of things stole from me. And, and, and or damaged. I had a 55 inch stone. I had a 55 inch busted. My sectional was torn. My, my furniture was, some of my furniture was damaged. Uh, my lawnmower was stolen. My weedy was done. This is all top of the line lawn equipment. So when I added it up, and hold on, y'all, the best part is all of my hardware to my beds and dressers, gone. Okay? 
So I'm, I'm, I'm pissed, y'all. I'm, I'm, I'm mad, right? So halfway through the day, I said, Lord, devil just trying to steal my joy. I said, but I'm not going to let it. Y'all, it took me five trips to Lowe's in three days to get all of my beds together. And which I did on my own because I'm just a go get okay? When I moved to Vermont and I lived in Vermont for that time, I learned that I had to learn how to do a lot of things. It wasn't, I couldn't call my daddy. I couldn't call my um, my brothers. I couldn't call a handyman. So I'm very well versed. I, I learned how to do things on my own. It took me y'all days. And then I said, Lord, I'm not going to stop. I was so tired. I got up from 7. I didn't get into bed to 1230. I said, I am not stopping until I get these dogs. And when I went to Lowe's, the folks knew me. They said, she's back again. I said, I'm not stopping. I'm, gonna get, I'm getting my bedroom suits together. But I say all that to say y'all that. That was Tuesday, okay? Wednesday, I received $250. I'm sorry, I take that back. Monday, Monday or Tuesday, I received $100. Tuesday, Wednesday, I received $250. Thursday, I received $750. Add that up. How much that is? That's $1,100. Now, nobody knew. Y'all just hearing about this. Only my parents knew. <laughs> About how much and what had happened to me. And I was blessed with that money before the end of the week back. No lie. Not making this up. I am not making this up. But I just, I had to tell y'all that because a lot of times the Lord, the, the devil, he'll come in and he knew I've been waiting to get in this house. You know? I had to sell my home in Georgia first. I was blessed enough to be able to stay with my parents for this year and not pay rent or another mortgage. That was a blessing. And then I had to wait on this home to be complete. So the Lord knew I love my parents to death now, but I'm grown. Now. I, I hadn't been with my parents since 22, so I needed, I needed my own space, y'all. You know, so he knew I was ready to get in this house, dream house, and Get to my storage and stuff just throwed in there and and nobody broke into storage now. So y'all can put it all together. But we it's okay. It's done. I'm in here. I'm settled. Everything is done in here. So um I'm happy, okay. Um you said you're a federal law. No, uh Danny, I, I used to work um in um as a as a deputy sheriff, you have to start out in the jail. So I worked in the jail for about two years, little, little less than two years. And there needs to be more training in mental health because many times behaviors are a result of men, mental health, uh, not criminal. I am in the mental health field, so I always try. Come on, is it Lana? You're absolutely right. Okay, trust me, I know personally. Okay. Um, during my time as a deputy sheriff, I came in contact with several, okay, uh, ment mentally ill, uh, you know, people. With that being said, it's the officer's mindset, okay? It's the officer's mindset. I, I'm going to tell y'all about this, 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 um, call that I got. It was my call. It was my beat. And when I tell y'all, this man was about six, two. Maybe 6'3", solid, okay? The call was he was throwing his belongings out of his house at cars passing by. Now, y'all know that's not right. That's not normal right there, right? Something's wrong mentally. So I get there. He's just throwing stuff, and I'm trying to talk to him. I'm keeping my distance now. I'm trying to talk. He's not even hearing me. So I know, okay. But I had already said if this man trying to attack me, I will have to shoot him. There was just no, this guy was huge, y'all. I'm not talking about fat. He was an animal, okay? But what I did was I kept my distance. I got several officers there. I think it ended up being maybe 10 deputies, okay? Taser didn't even work, okay? The taser didn't work, all right? So you're absolutely right when it comes to mental health. There are a lot of people that do have mental health issues. That's absolutely correct. Um... I just want to know how you keep a positive outlook when bad things come up. Where does it come from? Like I said, I do have a slight advantage. Um, my parents are very, very positive people. And I told y'all this before that, man, some of my classmates, they asked about my parents before they asked about how I'm doing because 
my parents have just been so good to people. I mean, even for me being a little girl, my dad used to coach football. And guess what the kids' um, parents used to tell him? If you want my son at the game Saturday, you're going to have to come get him. And the only way that my dad would ensure that the kids would be there, they would come sleep at our house. You understand? So that's just the beginning. Like I said, so I come from, you know, loving and you know, supportive and positive parents. But like I was saying in the beginning, if you don't, you know, I feel like there's always a way. Okay? There's always a way. You got to stop making excuses. Because I know when I don't know anything, guess what I do? Google knows everything. So even, even, even in times where you, you may feel like, oh man, I'm just sad and I can't shake it. Google trying to shake this, 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 you know, this sadness or depression over me. Read up on it. Even if you don't have a friend, pray about it. You, you understand? Listen to positive things, you know, go on YouTube and listen, listen. So, you know, those are things that can help if you don't have supportive or positive parents or a supportive, you know, friend or something like that. And I'm always here, you know, I know I'm busy. I've had people shoot questions to me. How do you do? If I got the minute, you already know I'm going to respond. I'm here. All right. All is well, Stan. Thank you. You give me strength. Well, you know what? I'm proud. I, I, that makes me feel good, Bunny, if I give you strength. Um, let's see. Let's see. All right. Here's another question. Does a female officer have to be called when apprehending another female officer? I've seen where male officers manhandle a female suspect. Okay. Ah, that's kind of broad, Maurice. Um, and it depends on policies and departments. Okay. Now, if that female, I'm going to tell you like this, and this is now, this is my experience. You have some women, they don't do it with women, but women do it with men. Okay. Now on patrol, I only had one lady uh, buck up at me, and it was my last week of at the sheriff's department. Okay, she 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 was mental too. Okay, but women didn't try me. Okay, but they tried male officers, and they do that because they feel like men are not going to do anything. And that's not in all cases, but I'm just saying in my experience. So let's just say if a female is not complying or whatever's going on. Before I say this, the amount of force used or applied should only be enough to 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 uh, get that person into custody. OK, so if, if that means a tighter arm bar or something like that, that's what I'm going to do. That don't mean start whacking that person in the face now. Now, if if it calls for that, because the, everything you, you just exhausted it and it's just an all right fight, that's a different situation. But just picking a woman up and body slamming her, and you're you're you know you're a nice sized man. Now that that's a set obsessive to me. That that's crazy. Now that just, but you got to you had to break those situations. Now it just depends on situation to situation. But no, as far as now, if you have males and they need a pat down on a woman, and that's another thing. Now that is departmental policy. Some departments say a man is not to pat a woman down at all. Some departments may say a man can pat that woman down for weapons. You know what I mean? And that's it. It varies. So it just that, that, you know, that, that varies. Um, let's see any more questions. Um, let's see. I know I saw another one in here, but um, any other questions y'all have on that? But you know, like I said, I'm gonna I'm going to continue to do what I'm doing. Um, keep moving forward in a positive um, fashion. Um, and like I said, I'm here. I'm here, y'all. Um, I want all y'all to be blessed. You know, I've I've ran into a few people. Um, I've just really been connecting with people and, you know, in just different ways. Um, and people have been really, really good, really, really good to me, you know, and I'm trying to show them love back too, you know? Um, but 
I'm gonna I'm gonna keep doing this. Would you encourage women? Would I okay? Uh, so Danita's asking, would you encourage women to become officers and security? Of course, of course. You know I'm gonna tell y'all something. I've been doing this 15 years, and when I tell you, my parents have never been scared. They have never ever expressed to me fear or concern for my safety. And it may be because they know I'm a tough cookie. I got three brothers, okay, y'all? So, and I'm the baby. So, you know, we used to fight, all right? So, I mean, I was the baby, and me and my me and my baby brother, which he's older than me, I mean, we used to, Lord Hammers, we used to fight so much. My mom said she used to cry. I didn't even know she used to cry, but she said, Lord, why my children fight this much? But we were so close in age. And so, you know, I guess my parents knew that, you know, I'm pretty tough, and they know that, you know, I'm going to do everything to the best of my ability, which means I'm going to be prepared. I'm going to train and things of that nature. So they never was concerned. So, of course, I encourage women. Yes. You know, law enforcement is wide open for black women. You know, it's not where it needs to be, but it's definitely, um, you know, you, you're going to, you're a minority in two ways. Okay. So, um, of course, I'm a, Yes, if it's your dream, if it's your passion, if it's something that you want to do, go for it. You should never let nobody or nothing, or even what's going on in this country right now, disencourage you from following a dream. Nothing. Yes, so yes. Um, I've been an officer for uh, 15 years now. I was a deputy sheriff for nine, and I've been a federal officer for six. So 15 years. Um... Are you taking off time from work? Um, actually, I took off a few days last week to get moved and get situated, get my son registered in school because I couldn't do that until I had my final paperwork for my home. So, yes, last Tuesday was it was rough, y'all. But I got through it. I got through last week. So I um I take a little break here. I'm a busy body anyway. Down you said so many female. Are you saying so many? Female uh, officers are afraid, or is it you saying officers in general? But now, I, I will say now, law enforcement is not uh, a field that you need to go into going into it being scared. Now, I'm not, don't confuse that with being, um, there are going to be situations that the hair is going to stand up in the back of your neck, okay? You, 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 you're going to, you know. But I'm saying just going to work scared every day, that's not, then it's not for you. That, because it's real out here. And and honestly, from the time that I was on, a patr on patrol to now, it's different. It's crazy. I mean, every car officer's pulling over now just about getting out shooting. So, I mean, this is, that's really, that's dangerous. Uh, so, you got to be mentally prepared and physically, you know, prepared as well. You have to be fit. Um... Thank you, TJ. Thank you. Um, it's my passion to be a police officer. Well, go for it. Don't don't stop. If that's your passion, you know. Remember, everything that you do, you have to put you have to put some work into. So, if that's your passion, do it. You know, uh, I'm gonna share this with you all. My goal was to be a federal investigator. You know, and we'll talk about that one day, too. I mean, I think that's a whole nother conversation can be had when you have to realize in life what you think you're supposed to do and what you think you ought to be doing and what God planned for you. So I think we'll talk about that another time because that's what I thought I was supposed to be in. All right. I thought that's what I was supposed to be doing because I was such a good investigator, you know, but that wasn't what God had planned. And that's OK. Um, um. Yes, yes, yes. I work on security and my family is fearful because of the climate. Well, it's a, it's that's understandable that your family will be fearful, but you as a female and you doing that, what you have to do is prepare yourself mentally and physically. Because I'm going to tell y'all what my attitude was when I was a deputy. And even now, I would work out in that gym so hard, y'all. Men would look and be like, oh my gosh, she's so strong. But this was my 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 mindset. I don't have to be able to whoop no man, but but I want to be strong enough 
that if something bad did happen, I got enough strength to get to my gun if he's trying to kill me. That was my attitude, so I stayed in shape. Physically, strength-wise, everything, okay? I stayed in shape. Um, let's see any of them. <laughs> okay, Maurice. Maurice said... Where do they where do they find where do they find a lot of female officers? Many of them are quite attractive. <laughs> uh, I already have a criminal justice degree and everything. Things are so crazy here in Savannah. I'm trying to decide what to, department I want to work for. So TJ, broaden your horizons, okay? Broaden your horizons. I would never be where I am if I was scared to leave Birmingham. I would not be. A lot of people don't want to move. Sometimes you have to move. I never thought in the many years with my job, it would have brought me back to Birmingham so quick. But it was circumstances to it. But I'm back in Birmingham six years later. Okay. Um, so with that being said, sometimes you have to move. You may have to leave Savannah. Just saying. You may have to. Um... All right, Audrey said, it's, it's very much like a war zone out there now. And what you're doing is valuable to give reassurance and educate people on survival skills. It is. Law enforcement is nothing to play with. You know, you, you don't get up and, and just put your uniform on and not mentally be prepared. You have to mentally be prepared for whatever that day may bring. You have to be ready. And I was always ready. I love your strength. Always. To, uh, depend on your own self. I, I have a husband, but I still depend on me to get stuff done. My husband always says to me, take time to relax. Some things can wait. And that's right. He's absolutely telling you right. You do have to take care of yourself. If you don't take care of yourself, honestly, y'all, I'm telling you, my my testimony is coming. I could have, telling y'all, I could have had a heart attack, nerves breakdown, all that. Um, I'm telling you, so you have to, you have to, um, take time for yourself. Um, Danny said, I wish they wouldn't hire so many racist police. Well, let's put it like this. In the forties and fifties, you know, we knew the racists because what did they wear? They wore that white cape, right? With that hood, right? Unfortunately, it's, it's 2020. They don't wear that no more. A lot of them are wearing uniforms. So I mean, um, this is gonna it's gonna take some time. It's gonna take some changes in the department and um, hiring process. You know, and and you know I applaud um, a lot of departments when they're seeing these officers um, make racial posts on Facebook and wherever the case may on social media. They need to be reprimanded. You know, honestly, in my opinion, if you make a racist comment about blacks, you should be fired. Not days off, okay? You should be fired because that shows where your heart is. So if you have hate, dislike towards black and brown people, that is going to show on the traffic stops, the calls, your arrest, okay? Your your the, the, the way you police is going to show. It's going to come out, you know? So I, I all that days off, no, 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 no. Because when I told y'all in my court, change your heart. So if a person's heart is messed up, they're going to continue to feel that way about black people. Just going to... I'm just, I'm just saying it, that, that I can't change somebody else's heart. Now, you make us off of somebody hard and then they decide that, you know what, I do need to change my heart. But I mean, that, that, that starts within. Like I said, that starts within. Um, I agree that they need to be fired. No tolerance, zero tolerance. It should be zero tolerance. Um, I think I hit everything, y'all. Um, I hit on family bad experiences. I talked about that. Um, just, y'all just, just, just be positive. Um, 
Don't allow the negativity and the negative people. Sometimes you're married to negative folks. Sometimes you're dating somebody negative. It's your decision. It's your decision. Are you going to choose yourself? Or are you going to choose them? You're going to let them keep bringing you down? You're going to let that person keep making your life a living hell? That's your decision. That that is absolutely your decision. So, you know, for me, um, I'm going to always take care of myself. I have a son that depends on his mother. So if I'm out here letting these folks say stuff and bring me down and have me say it, what good am I gonna be to him? Because you all know somebody you may have been depressed before. You may have a family member that suffered from depression. <laughs> and with that being said, are they any good when they depress? Think about it. So you allow people around you to bring you down. You are no good to nobody else. And your number one priority should be your child if you do have a child or children. You know, that should be your number one goal and priority. You know, so... <laughs> Michelle, she said, I can't wait for you to write a book. Uh, what's, what was done to this in law enforcement should be and be, believe it or not. I'm just grateful. Let me tell you something, Michelle. I, you know how many people that didn't say things and spoke things in my life? You're going to write a book. You're going to be this. And, and I'm like, hey, y'all taking me fast. But uh, it is funny that you say that because several um, writers have friended me and sent requests. Now, I hadn't reached out to me about a book or anything like that. But that's kind of funny, you know. Um, I don't know. I don't, you know, I don't know. Because my plate is getting full. I'm telling y'all, I'll be... I be so busy, but hey, I'm about to um, kick it in another another gear because I've been so busy with a lot of stuff. Now I didn't move, I didn't got settled, so I'm finna get my gym over here by my house because y'all didn't know me. No, that's what I love to do. I'm finna get back right, and when I work out, oh man, it just for me it gives me so much more energy and stuff like that. So, who verifies and signs off on the police reports? Um, Maurice, now. At my department, you know, when I, it's always the supervisor. Um, you know, you do, a, you do your report um, and it goes into a file pretty much, I guess. You, you hit it, you complete it, boom, <clears throat> you send it for approval. And that, that supervisor should look at that. Um, yeah, so your supervisor. What's up, Sanders? How you doing? Uh, let's see what else. You have a publisher. Well, I'm, I'm telling y'all that I am, Michelle, I am, I'm just letting the Lord use me. Just like that song, y'all, L.J. Eccles. Um, I put it on my page. If you haven't heard it, it's probably way down my timeline or either go on YouTube. L.J. Eccles. Lord, use me. And y'all, I had heard that song before all of this, but it hit me. That's that's my that's 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 the way I feel. I want him to use me in every way. You know what I'm saying? Even if it's just some words today to help somebody to give somebody a little bit more strength to fight. Because I know how it is to be sad. You know, things not going your way and, and to be hurt. So I know how that feels. So are you familiar with Lieutenant Edwin uh Raymond, who is an activist that works at NYPD? He speaks out against racism within no, I I don't know who he is, Denise. Uh -uh. We can't change who our family. We can't ch choose our family, but we can. Ch that I agree, Lacey. Y'all, come on, y'all. You know, so everybody on my timeline is grown, and when I say grown, twenty one and up, I I may have somebody. I'm not sure, but the majority of the people that are friends with me, twenty one and up, and if you are one of those people that says that. My life has not been fair or, you know, I've been hurt. And we, we all know that a lot of hurt comes from our own family sometimes. So it's up to you to make that decision. And let me say this. I go to counseling. Matter of fact, I got a call her today because last week I was so busy. But I go to counseling. Well, we Zoom, okay, because she had a baby. And I love, my, I love her. Make sure you get a counselor that you will talk to. 
Um, a lot of people and a lot of black people do not want to go to therapy. And y'all wonder why your marriage is not working. You wonder why your relationship's not working because you all messed up. It's not, and it's not because it's your fault. You know, you may have been traumatized as a child or hurt as a child. And it's now it's spilling over into your adult life. And then now your relationship and your marriage is they all screwed up because you, you, you're not right as an individual, which I said, you got to take care of yourself. Y'all better, you better get some counseling. Most of y'all, if you got good insurance, they pay for it anyway. And a lot of jobs is free. I know mine is free. So I call and I, and we talk, we talk, I get it all out. Um... When I lived in California, I was going to be a peacemaker teammate, and they closed that part. How how can we develop that? How can we develop that? Um, Shayna, now when you say a peacemaker teammate, tell me what that is because I'm not educated on that. I know that's out in California. I haven't heard of it here, so drop drop down and tell me what that is. Um, Tulsa, Oklahoma, I see you. Thank you. Tisha said, my timeline, grown and sexy, I can't do the youth. They don't have no respect. I agree. But you know what? Unfortunately, um, Tisha, it's a breakdown and it's been a breakdown. Somebody failed somewhere, right? Because these kids are out of control. Got a lot of people having kids that's not being parents. That may hurt, okay? But it's a fact. It's been a breakdown. You're right. A lot of these kids, they do not have respect. They really don't. With all the hatred and division, they taking a platform helps us give us a balance. Jackie, I'm going to do everything I can. I, I, I promise you. I told y'all. I bet a lot of people thought that once I, that, that, that video went viral, I made the second video that it was going to be it. No, we, we're moving. We're moving. I, I won't change. Y'all won't change. Everybody won't change. I told y'all change is here. We can't keep praying about it. Okay. And not doing nothing about it. We got to, we got to start. We got to start acting. We got to start acting. Who is my counselor? Um, it's called work in progress. Um, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, office here in Birmingham. Now I'm sure, you know, technology now, um, I guess it wouldn't matter if you're out of state. I know uh, me and my counselor, her name is uh, Shadora, okay, at Work in Progress. And that is here in Birmingham. And she's amazing. When I tell you she's the country, I know y'all say I'm country from probably everywhere else. Y'all, y'all, you know, tuning in. But she's so country. But I remember the first time I saw her, me and my son went for family. And I said to myself, that's why you can't judge a book by its cover, y'all. I said, man, this young girl, not she, she ain't going to be able to tell me nothing, right? And my son love her, right? But when I started needing her for me, she on time, y'all. So, but make sure you do have a counselor that um, that that you can relate with. And because if you're not comfortable, you're not going to tell the truth. You're not going to give them everything. Can't nobody help you if you don't give it all now. I'm talking about you got to give it all. I don't care if you was 10 years old and somebody did something to you. You better start talking about it. <clears throat> you better start talking about it because those, those demons, that's what's hunting a lot of people. You got to talk about it, y'all. Get it out. Um, I'm going to, I'm afraid for my 16-year-old son to drive. He's looking at colleges. I want him to be safe. That's why I, me and my brother, we're doing those videos. We're, we're trying to inform you all uh, on some laws and just how to conduct yourself on the, on the traffic stop and, and be safe at the same time. Okay, so that's why we're doing that on YouTube. Okay, and that is DGNA, just like my Facebook, but no Jackson on that DGNA. That's the YouTube, okay? You can't blame children without blaming the adults. I agree. I agree with that. We we got to take responsibility. African Americans as a whole has been misinformed about the benefits of getting counseling. That through generations, many have been taught to only discuss issues with. I'm gonna tell you something, and this is keeping it in the house. 
from what I'm hearing and I'm understanding, the keeping it in the house is because it's been a lot of uncles, daddies, brothers, cousins, sisters that was touching and molesting um, family members. So that keeping it in the house stuff, that ain't about nothing, okay? Um, no, you, you need to start looking out for yourself and your mental health so that you can have a great, um, a great life and that you can start beginning to heal from childhood experiences. Could be adult experiences, but yeah, you're right. It is something that has been cast down on us to believe that, you know what? Don't tell nobody. No, start talking. Start talking. You got to start talking. That's, I mean, like I said, y'all, that's a part of who I am. You know, you got to talk, be positive, you know, get it out. Believe in that. Every bad situation, you can transform that thing and make it a better situation. Y'all saw my video. I was angry. I was hurt. And I'm still traumatized by it. But I never knew that it was going to take this spin. You know, I never knew that it was going to get to this point to where now that I'm inspiring people, people are reaching out to me and saying that. I'm an inspiration. I'm giving giving them hope. So look at that bad situation. Turned out to be a great situation. So use this, do the same thing in your own life. You know, things that you've been through. I'm in many, I'm in cultural counseling. Is type of okay. Um, but yeah, if y'all don't have any um other questions. Say that you can have Jesus and a therapist. We need that. Most blacks suffer from PTSD and don't know her. I agree. I agree. Anger and hurt does not come from just... People don't just wake up and be angry and hurt. That's coming from somewhere deep down. Deep down inside. Something that happened, you know, so... There's always talk about the kids, but rarely do we speak our uh, failures in the education of our community. I agree. It's been a breakdown. Uh, we can go on and on about that. It's 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 been a it's been a breakdown, and we we as adults, you know, we got to start coming together a lot more than we have been. That's why when Mackenzie's mother reached out to me Saturday. I was laying in that bed and I was still relaxing. But when she said to me, my daughter would love to meet you, y'all. And I hadn't relaxed like that. And I got up. I said, look, can you get me by two o'clock? I got up and I got myself together because we need more of that. You know what I mean? We need more of being a positive influence in, in, in kids' lives, you know. Um, generation. I mean, that I mean. We not, may not see much change now, but we gotta we 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 gotta start uh, start helping more, you know, and not being so self centered. I was always told I sound like I am from Alabama, and I'm from country, so you country too. <laughs> uh, but um, y'all, I am I'm not gonna hold y'all. Um much longer I agree uh, Tisha said these parents want to be the kids friend I agree y'all I'm a single parent and my son from day one I'm going to tell y'all something I've never played with him and to this day you and meet him you know I don't play with him because you're going to have respect I'm going to teach you values of life that's what I'm going to do so y'all single parents out there you can do it too y'all you just, it's, I know it's, a, I may have a little advantage, y'all, because I got brothers, okay, and I'm the baby, so I'm a little tough, and so for me, I have to sometimes tell myself, okay, all right, Holly, you got to soften up, now, I ain't just hard on him, he just knows, he's, he, I'm this, he's this one, but I do remember, okay, you, you being mom and dad, even though daddy is there, but, um, it's got to be a balance. You got to get that love, too. You got to get that affection, but that affection. But you got to also, you have to be on these kids, y'all. You can't, you can't be their friend any mom and, mom and daddy, too. 
it's a time for that. And I understand some people have kids younger, so y'all kind of grow up together. But let that time come when they get grown. Don't do it while they're growing up because these kids need that structure. If you're not giving it to them growing up, then they're going to be just like we got some grown folks out here kind of messed up, you know. So, um, I think. The problem is, yeah, that is, that's true, Jill. Um, these kids not getting whippings no more. And I'm not saying that every child deserves a whipping. And I'm not saying that every kid need a whooping, okay? Because um, you have to know your child, you know? Um, I, all I do is tell my son to come in and he know I would, he'd be standing about six feet away. <laughs> but, you know, you have to know your kids. Some kids you can talk to. You never have to whoop. But some of them, you have to show them that I'm not the one to play with. And that's something that just ha doesn't happen anymore. And a lot of y'all get these kids way too much. And I'm not going to tell y'all how to raise y'all kids now. But make sure you're instilling values, okay? There's nothing wrong with the Jordans. There's nothing wrong with designer. But let these kids know where they come from. Let these kids know that I work hard. Because when you create these habits... And then these kids get grown and they can't keep up when they start stealing and robbing and stuff because they want to look good because they've always and they can't supply that. Make sure y'all teaching those values too now. Okay, that that's important too. Indeed, I have three sons and I'm a single mom. They know it's never a smart idea to challenge my position. Balance is key. My oldest is six three. Ooh, you got a giant. And and I'm five three. That that it don't matter. Cause I guarantee you. I'm going to tell you something about these boys. That chest, is something about that chest, you know, that, that does something to them. You, you, I'm sure you can reach his chest <laughs> at 6'3". You will bring the smoke. That's right. That is right. Make a believer out of them. Ooh. Punishment is worse than... <laughs> punishment is worse than a whipping. And these cell phones, y'all, I'm going to say this, y'all, about the cell phones. Be real careful about these cell phones and these kids. And once again, I'm not going to tell you how to raise your kids because you, they're yours. And I'm going to raise mine the way I want to raise mine. But be careful with these kids and what they are watching and the social media because there's a lot of perverts out there. There's a lot of creeps out there. And they're coming for these kids because they know y'all are buying these phones at 8 and 9, 10 years old. So y'all make sure you have a a educational awareness about these phones and stuff. You can't just get these kids these phones. Well, I didn't. First of all, I didn't even buy my son no phone. He's 11. His dad bought one and guess what? It, where, where I got it. I let him have it when he go other than that. Nope. Because he's not, I don't feel like he's mature enough for no phone. Because we had to have the birds and the bees talk. Some of y'all ain't having the birds and the bees talk. When I said it to my son, and I, it, was, it was a little challenging for me, okay? Y'all, I'm not going to lie. And I asked him, I said, Caleb, you know what the birds and the bees is? And he was looking like, no, mommy. And I was like, Lord, I got to go through it. Well, I had to get into it. But when I asked him that, he said, I was like, okay, I can, I can back out of it now, y'all. I said, no, but I got to have this talk. You got to have it, you know. So until I feel like he's mature enough and ready to understand the dangers of these phones and what people are doing with these kids, he will not have it. Nope. I don't care what y'all say. I know what my 11-year-old is. I don't need to have to call him. So, And if he ain't with me, he's with his dad. And if he ain't with his daddy, he's with his grandparents. So, nah. With the baby, <laughs> the baby social distancing went in trouble. But, yeah, y'all got to start disciplining these kids, for real. You have to. My parents buy, my, buy children things they don't deserve. The, the parents do. I agree. I agree. Be bad as I all get out. Making bad grades and they they're cleaner than you and me. They shop. They shop. That they, that teaches them that I don't have to work for anything in life. And which that then develops into a a trait as an adult. Okay, I can go on a job, I'm a half, but that's you 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 are instilling things in your child that you really don't even know that you are. And it's I teach my son, I we go through the drive through because I don't eat that a lot of that fast food crap. I order him something. I, I teach my son, if I buy you something, and I buy you food, if, if somebody in this vehicle, you offer them food. Now, some of y'all may not, you may think that's small, but that's sharing. That That's teaching him to share. 
And if you think in this life that you're never going to have to share it with nobody, you may not need somebody, you're a fool. So I'm instilling that. It's just the little things that you have to instill in your uh, your kids. My white daughters have worked every, very hard raising their black sons. They have done a very good job. The lecture on the proper behavior at the traffic stop has been a big deal. Uh, their sons are 26. Okay. Well, Bunny, <clears throat> we got a lot more coming. I got. A, I still have a couple saved uh, videos. Um, put put one out this week. My brother lives in Atlanta, and we're supposed to meet back up again the first weekend of October. We're gonna we're gonna make some more videos. He 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 was kind enough to drive from Atlanta to the house, and uh, we get these videos for you all. We're trying to just educate, you know, just educate. Um. Not only does it teach them that they don't have to work, it teaches them respect. So do it, I agree, Brittany. I agree. My daughter's just turned 18 and my son is too. I don't play 18 year olds just a number. That's right. You 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 got to. We don't have cell phones. We didn't. We sure did. I was. Man, it's a whole different day and age. I've seen six year olds with phones, but I was. I was in the 10th grade. So would that make you 16? When I got my first phone. I was in 10th grade. But, you know, I understand we living in a different day and time. But it also brings about different challenges. Okay? So you didn't have perverts, you know, in social media like that then. It was jumping in, you know, trying to do things and get kids to do stuff. So you, that's what I'm saying. It's different. So you, you just have to educate the kids. You have to educate, and that's right. But, y'all, I am. Um, all right, New Jersey, I see you in the building. Um, I'm trying to make sure I didn't forget anybody, y'all. But, you know, if y'all want more topics, I don't know. I'm going off of y'all. So, if y'all DM me and say, hey, you know, I want to hear about this. I want to hear about that. Um... Just DM me, uh, message me, you know, and then I may, you know, I may make a post on maybe um, some ideas of what, what you all want to see in these videos. Um, we'll do that too. Um, I think that's it, y'all. Um, I think I got everybody. I got my first phone, so. Oh my God, Denise. Oh Lord, have mercy. Denise said, will you consider running for office? I mean, I'm, listen, I'm not no politician. You know, the, the, the way I feel about politicians, and they all may not be this way. I really do believe in my heart that a lot of politicians start out good and they kind of get corrupt. Now, that may not be all. I want to do what I'm doing right now. You know what I mean? I want to help people. I want to motivate people. I really just don't. I mean, I, I like I told somebody after I posted that viral video, um, I don't know what God got in store for me. If that's the way he sent me, that's where I'm going. I would not buck against him. Um, you know, um, I, I will not buck against him. Um, somebody said, well, I speak on voting. That's... I, I really don't get in politics, but I will say, I posted three years ago, I said, if you can stand in line for some joints for four or five hours, you can go vote. So that's all I got to say about that. Y'all know who you are. Uh, I, I really don't get in too much politics. I have to be careful with that, especially working for the government. So I have to be real careful with that. Um, parents always said, you living under my roof, your business is mine, period. Who you talk to, who you come to my house, everything. But we, we just got to make sure that we are breaking those, what as people say, generational curses. Um, people, I hear that word all the time, breaking um, the generational curse. Hey, y'all may be the first one in your family that 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 is going against the grain and says that now it's time for me to change. Now it's time for me to not not to be like my mother, not to be like my father, or whatever. I want to be better. That's okay. 
You may get some resistance, but once again, like I told y'all, surround yourself by positive people. Um, make sure uh, you're taking care of yourself. But you're, but you're solid in character, and we need people of your caliber to change the status quo in lawmaking. Pray on it. I will. I'll do that, Denise. You pray on it, too, you know? Uh, like I told you, I'm just letting God use me. Um, I'm, just, I'm just letting him use me. Girl, don't let that pretty hair turn. Oh, let me tell you something. <laughs> listen, listen. Say, hey, you right. My hair would be the first one in the office talking about... Uh, I have gray hair. No, you right. I'm, I'm trying to look a mess this morning, trying to hurry up. Had me rushing getting on here this morning. But, uh, but yeah, uh, thank you. Y'all see Lacey then created a new uh, hashtag, Demotivated. But, yeah, y'all know I'm going to always speak the truth. I'm going to do that. But I ain't going to hold y'all Labor Day up no more. I'm glad y'all tuned in. I hope I said something to help somebody, encourage somebody in the slightest, uh, smallest way. Um, like I said, I do be busy, but if you really need advice, you really DM me, you know, message me. Um, just be patient if I'm a little slow with it, but, um, are you like my pitch? I love it too. It, this is my bar room, y'all. Um, it is pretty dope. I love it too. Um, but, um, but yeah, reach out to me. I, I'll, um, uh, I'll try to help you as much as I can. Y'all enjoy your Labor Day. Be safe. Have so much fun. Um, have fun today. Um, and we'll, y'all, well, Wednesday, we'll be posting another video Wednesday. All right. Wisdom Wednesday. Appreciate y'all. Love y'all. Hey, keep saying those prayers for me. Prayer, prayer is powerful. Prayer is deep. I need it. Uh, so don't stop praying. I need it. And I want the prayers. Love y'all.